Hi guys, Trading Mamas here. I just want to do a quick video um, to show you guys um, the limit, uh, the, the difference between stop orders and stop limit orders and how to place them. Um, somebody was asking me about this yesterday. Um, so before we get started, I just wanted to make sure you guys know I'm not a financial advisor and please make sure you do your due diligence and research before making your investment decisions. Um, also, before we get started, if you could please hit the like button and subscribe, it really helps me out and helps me make uh, continue making more videos for you guys. So let's get started. So I just wanted to sort of review the difference between a stop order and a stop limit order. So these orders are basically um, orders that will help you prevent loss. So if you're investing money in a stock and you don't want to lose your initial investment or you want to protect um, a little bit of the profit you made and you know, you're know you not there to monitor, you're not going to be able to monitor the stock market and um, you might miss if it goes too low or if it, you know, if it goes high, you might not be able to monitor. Um, so these are sort of um, methods you can use to sort of protect yourself. Um, from losing your investments if you're not there to watch and sell before you know you start losing money things like that so um, really quickly a stop order I don't really use these ones that often but um, I'll tell you what it is it's it's not visible to the market so usually when you place a limit order the market can see um, what your limits placed at and that's how they sort of are able to calculate the bid and the ask price um, so this one's not visible to the market and what it does is you set your stop price and then once your stop price is triggered, um, your broker will, will try to fill your order um, and, and you know sell it or buy it, whatever you had specified um, once that stop price is triggered. Um, so let's say you bought uh, Tesla for 600 and you know it's 800 now and you want to make sure, you protect your profit, some of your profit. So you can set your stop price at 700 um, and then it'll be triggered at that point and then your broker will sell your shares for you. So um, this ad advantage of this is it sort of avoids the risk of no fills or partial fills, um, but the disadvantage is it'll fill at market price. So you don't really know what price it's gonna fill at. It'll trigger at 700, but by the time your broker gets around to selling it or finding you know available um, buyers for your shares or whatever um, you know you might not get 700 for it you might get a lot worse so you might get like 650 six you know who knows so that's uh that's why i think stop orders are a little risky so i tend to use um, stop limit orders if i have to do a stop loss so these ones, um, once you set them, they're visible to the markets. So the market knows what price you're trying to sell at. Um, and they instruct your broker to fill your buy or sell order <clears throat> at a specific price that you specify or better. So um, the advantage of this is um, you don't, um, sorry, the risk of this is that if your order doesn't fill by, um, by the time you know it hits your limit, if your broker can't fill it in time, then you it might not be able to execute, and then you'll have a no fill or a partial fill. So that's a disadvantage, but I still think it's a safer option. And if you do space out the stop uh, trigger price and the limit price, and if you give yourself a good cushion, um, you should be able to avoid the risk of partial or no fills most of the time. So um, I'm just gonna show you guys quickly how to do this here. So let's say, again, in that example, I bought Tesla at, um, let's say 600 and you know right now, okay, so it says here 726, that's the last price. So let's say I bought five shares. This is all hypothetical because this is a practice account and I don't really have these shares in there, but let's say I had them in here. So I would um, you know hit my five quantity, then I would change the order type to, um, stop limit so I'll show you that one first so I'm going to set my stop price so it's 725 right now let's say I, I don't want to lose um, a lot of money so you know my initial investment I bought at 600 so I'm gonna set the trigger price at 700 and then I'm gonna set the limit price at 680 and I feel like that leaves a, a really big cushion so um, I think that that'll be uh, safe and my order will fill if I'm, set, I'm trying to sell it. So what I would do here, so the when when Tesla, if Tesla hits 700, 
my broker will start working on um, filling the order, selling selling the shares for me. And um, so the limit price here is the is the lowest price you're willing to pay. So somewhere in between 700 and 680, your order will fill, and hopefully it'll be closer to the 700. So that's how it works. Um, and you're going to set your um, duration probably till good till canceled because usually stop losses are set for a long period of time. Um, so that's usually what you would do. There may be a reason why you want to set it during the day, um, you know, for one day duration, that's fine. But yeah, you would do that and then you would hit the sell button and um, that's how you would sort of prevent um, losses. So that's how you would do a stop limit. And um, stop order is pretty much the same except you don't have your limit price. So let's say your stop price, the trigger price is 700. Well, your broker will try attempt to start filling that order, that sell order for you um, when Tesla hits 700. But um, it's going to fill up market. So by the time the order fills, we don't really know what price it'll fill for. So, um, you know, if you're lucky, you'll get 700, 699, but you know, sometimes the shares aren't available or whatever, and you, your, your broker can't fill it right on time. So you might end up getting like 650 or 660. So that's not the greatest scenario. So that's why, um, I always try to use stop limits and that way I sort of, have a better idea of what to expect um, my sell price to be. So that's basically it. Um, hope you like this video. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.